Pucky Puppy. Pucky Puppy? Pucky Puppies. Today we're checking out Pucky Puppy's new Samoyed bike. I've been riding this around for the last few days, so stick around for a few minutes and I'll tell you what I found and what I thought and see if this is a good bike for you. This new bike will come in at a price of around $800 to $1,000 and is equipped with a 750 watt motor at about 80 newton meters of torque. This bike is equipped with a removable battery which you just need a key and it simply pops out. Now this is a 48 volt battery that's only 15 amp hours so not as high as others but you can check the battery status while it is outside of the bike and also charge it and it simply pops back in. The bike does come with wide style grips for extra comfort and also a 5 button selector switch to help move you around the display which this is very nice as it is a colored display and is plenty bright enough to be able to see in direct sunlight. Now this bike is equipped with a walk feature which you simply press the down arrow and this will activate that function that way if you need to get off the bike and push it up a hill, this is there to assist you. This bike is equipped on the right side with a seven speed selector. You have a rear seven speed cassette that is also changed by a tourney derailleur, which these are a little bit more entry level parts, but do work. You simply press your thumb to change the gears and then back again with a secondary button. And it also is equipped with a thumb throttle. Now this bike is equipped with cable driven disc brakes which these are actually easier to maintain than hydraulic brakes and it does come with larger 180 millimeter disc rotors which some are 160 which are actually too small for some of these heavier e-bikes which this one comes in right about 75 to 76 pounds. This bike is also equipped with a dual front headlight which does work and it's not as bad as others but you also have a rear functioning brake light to let people know that you are slowing down or stopping. Now this is a fat tire bike so it does run on a 26 inch diameter 4 inch wide aggressive knobby tire which this is more aggressive than others so if you are wanting to get off the trails I found that this didn't have a problem on your hard pack surfaces as it did really well whether you're just cruising or if you wanted to pick up the pace and go a little bit faster this actually felt very confident. Now there is a front fork lockout if you prefer to lock this front suspension. I don't see a lot of people using that but this is also just a leisure cross country bike and not really meant for jumping or downhill aggressive riding. Now this bike does have a lot of adjustability for shorter or taller riders but taller riders will want the seat much higher and also the seat as far back as possible as I found out the cockpit was a little bit small but this is by far one of the best seats I've ridden on as all day riding shouldn't be a problem. Now if you're looking at using this as a commuter bike it does have a rear storage rack that can hold 25 kilograms or just a little over 50 pounds. Now this bike is equipped with front and rear fenders to help keep water spray off of you or anything else but I did find they are a little bit flimsy but they held up fine during my test rides. I guess I just like my stuff a little bit more rigid. Okay now one of the tests I like to do is to see if I can pedal the bike up this little hill. It's just kind of a test really is all it is to see if I can actually make it up here without any battery power because we are not using any and it kind of gives you an idea of how it's geared and how heavy the bike is for the gearing which I can already tell I'm not going to make this. Okay well I had to stand a little bit to make it up this. Oh but uh yeah, if your battery dies, I would definitely like to have one more gear. Two would be more ideal. I don't know why they all do seven speeds. Nine would be way better. Okay, let's go ahead and turn this on. And we'll see how well it accelerates up this hill. Now, it's not super big, but, you know, it's enough to see what the torque is like. Okay, let's put this all the way up to the highest setting at number five. And now we'll see how well this 750 watt motor does. Now, it does say up to 80 newton meters of torque, which again is pretty standard. And off we go. Uh, not that bad, actually. Okay, so I did do a speedometer check. As you can see, I'm on number one. And if we check our speedo, we're just about matching up. It's about a half a mile an hour off roughly, which this isn't bad. Some are a full mile or even a little bit more off. So this is pretty close. 
Okay, so for pedal assist settings, if you're on number one or pedal assist number two, it doesn't matter if you're using just throttle only, the bike is only gonna go about 20 miles an hour. So even if you go all the way up to pedal assist number five, the bike is still only gonna go 20 miles an hour. Now, when you start pedaling, this is when it'll start going up to its max speed of 28 miles an hour. Now this is a cadence type pedaling, so even if you pedal slow or fast, the bike is gonna go basically the same speed all the way up to 28. Now I'm just over 200 pounds and it's about 105 degrees today, so the bike actually did pretty good. And look at that, it's pretty much all the way up to 27, 28 miles an hour, flat ground, super hot but it still made it up to its rated speed, which you can unlock it, but it may or may not make it go any faster. Now, after riding this bike for a couple days on and off, I found that it was definitely really comfortable. Again, I'm 5'11", so I'm a little bit taller than the average rider for this bike, and I found that the seat post wasn't quite far enough back for me when I first initially rode it. So taller riders are definitely gonna wanna have the seat farther back. Now, if you are a little bit taller than 6'6'1", this may not be the bike for you, as it is a little bit tight in the cockpit, but this bike will definitely fit some older people who have mobility problems or who are shorter and they can step through the frame. Now, some of you are probably wondering if you can unlock this bike and you can. This one is actually really easy. You just go to the selector switch where you shift up and down and you are gonna press all three buttons at the same time, which is gonna be your up arrow, down arrow, and the light. This will then take you into the speed setting screen where you can then change the speed from the 28 miles an hour and just simply scroll all the way up or all the way down until you reach 61, that's the highest it'll go. And then if you want, you can lift the wheel off the ground on the rear, go ahead and hit the throttle, and then it'll spool it all the way up until it reaches about 49 miles an hour. Now this doesn't mean it's gonna go 49 miles an hour because weight, hills, and conditions are all gonna apply, plus this is only a 750 watt motor that has 80 newton meters of torque roughly. Now I did do a couple speed runs and with a good long stretch, I was able to get into about 30 to 31 miles an hour and going down a hill, I was able to break about 34, 35. So that was pretty interesting. Now, if you do plan to unlock this, remember that's at your own risk and that could even void the warranty. I don't know how any of that works, so that's all on you if you guys want to do that. Now, other things about this bike, at least some of the things I noticed, is that I'm 5'11 and I can easily step through this with no problem. I did move my seat back pretty much as far as I could because that allowed me more room in the cockpit which this actually has plenty of room for me. Now, again, if you're 6'1", six, 6'2", six, I think that's going to be maxed out. Even though the seat will go up and move farther back, I don't know many people that have tried my bikes that are over 6'2", that feel like this is big enough. Typically, they need a larger frame bike, which is why they make them. But for riders who are short, this seat does drop a decent amount, but because I have it slid all the way back, it's actually hitting the basket because since I'm taller, I needed to slide the seat back. But you can see if I turn this, look how far down that goes. So if you're a short rider and you need to get on this, you can definitely fit this pretty easy. And this seat actually is super comfy. It's one of the more comfortable seats that I've ridden when it comes to reviewing e-bikes. Okay, so when it comes to pros and cons, pros, real easy bike to ride. It's light enough, it's not as heavy as some other ones that are about 80, 85 pounds, and it has plenty of power for the average rider. If you're a little bit heavier, you may wanna look into something with a little bit more power. Other pros is again, the seat is super comfortable. This thing you could ride on for several hours, and I don't think you would even need bike shorts whatsoever. The brakes are more inadequate for the regular rider and the low frame makes it real easy for people to get on and off. So if you have some mobility problems like a hip or something like that, this bike is definitely easy enough to get on and off. Now, when it comes to the cons, there's really only about two or three that I can think of is the amp hours on the battery. 15 amp hours is a little bit low for some of the heavier e-bikes as it does kind of take your distance away as this one is supposed to be 25 miles all electric, but that also depends on your weight, the temperature outside, how many hills you're going up and down and more, but it can go higher than that if you do assist it with pedaling. 
So if you're looking for a longer range bike, you may want to find something that has more amp hours in it. If you're a little bit heavier, you may want something with more power and more torque. This will definitely move you up hills a lot easier because I found with this bike, the 80 Newton meters of torque is not quite enough to really get you up some of the steeper hills all by yourself. You will have to pedal and just help it along. But overall, it's not a bad bike. If you can pick it up on a sale price, I think that'd be great. I will have discount links down below. And if you guys have any questions, there's a link called Ask Me. And I hope to see you guys in another video.